Review of the Donner Seeker Series DST-152 Electric Guitar Kit This electric guitar kit is one of several kits and guitars that are being released this year at NAMM. This year being 2022, as you might be watching this video at some time in the future. And I've chosen the Sunburst one to review. However, these guitars do come in a number of different colours, so you can choose the one you like best. And they advertise this one as being for advanced guitarists. However, it comes with a kit that's clearly designed for an absolute beginner. So this guitar is suitable for anyone who plays the guitar at any level really. And I chose this guitar because I've got another guitar that's almost the same spec and almost the same colour. And I'd love to do a comparison video in the future to see is there any value in getting a really expensive guitar as opposed to a cheap guitar. And in the spirit of honesty and disclosure, I've got no connection to Donna and I'm not being paid by the company. However, they did provide this kit. But even with that, I will be completely honest. And if there's anything I don't like about it, I will tell you. As anyone who's seen my past reviews will know. But I do have high expectations for this guitar, as I've already reviewed several Donner instruments, including two ukuleles and the DLP-124, which is the Donner copy of a Les Paul guitar. And interestingly, I also got that one in a sunburst, so I obviously like that colour. If you're interested in Donner as a brand, it's worth taking a look at their website, because they sell lots of instruments at lots of different levels, and even studio equipment. Let's take a look at what comes with this guitar from the Amazon listing. You get the guitar, a soft case, an amp, a tuner, lead, capo, a tremolo bar for the guitar and tools to set it up, a strap, spare set of strings and some picks. So there's absolutely nothing you need to start playing the guitar. And they even give you access to an app to get you started with some guitar lessons. Right, let's get on with the review. And the guitar arrived in a box that seemed just big enough for the guitar in a case. So I was a bit concerned at first that they'd sent me the wrong thing and I hadn't got the kit. But as you can see, they managed to fit it all in really neatly. Right, to get them out of the way first, before we look at the guitar, let's take a quick look at all the accessories. And we'll start with the amp. I won't go through all the spec in details, as they'll come to light during the video, but I'll put them here for a second, so if you want to read through them, you can just pause the video. You'll notice I'm speeding up all the unpacking sections, just to make it a little less boring to watch. It comes with a charging lead and an auxiliary lead. And there it is. And it's pretty solidly built. And for an amplifier, it's really light. But for its size, it's pretty heavy. I suppose you've got to take into consideration the weight of the speakers and the batteries. And mentioning the speakers, it seems that it is actually stereo, because I noticed on the specs that it was stereo, which is strange for a guitar amp, because they normally only need to be mono unless you're going through stereo effects. And it is pretty small, which kind of surprised me. I didn't expect it to be quite so small. However, this could be pretty handy, because if you want to take the guitar out somewhere, it's easy to transport. And if you've not got much space in your house or your room, you can easily store this away in a drawer. Right, I'll put the amplifier on charge now, and then we can take a better look and test it later in this video. And when you plug in the charger, the LED on the back goes red, and then it goes off when it's charged. They don't provide you with a power supply, 
but it's a standard USB lead. And I've just plugged this into a mobile phone charger. Right, let's go on to the next item in the package, and that's the lead. And it's a pretty good quality lead. I'm happy to say it's got the metal plugs on the end of it, rather than the nasty moulded plastic ones. And this means in the long run, if ever you break the lead, you can fix it again. Unlike the moulded plastic ones, which just have to get chucked away. And the lead is quite light, which is perfect for the amp you get with this setup. As a heavy lead would end up pulling the amp over all the time. And the next thing to look at is the strap. And along with the strap in the bag are the two tools for setting up the guitar and the tremolo bar, which I'll fit later onto the guitar. And the strap itself is made of a strong canvas material with leatherette ends, which are really quite thick, so they won't break easily. Right. We've had a look at the amp, at the lead and at the strap. So there's just this little bag of goodies to open up now and take a look what's inside there. And in the bag is the tuner, a spare set of strings, some picks and the capo. So, now we really need to get the guitar out in order to test the accessories work. But as we do this, we'll take a look at the case. And the first thing to point out is that all the accessories, except for the amplifier, fit really neatly inside the pocket on the side of the case. Now, really, it's an A4 size and it's intended for your music and lessons and whatever. But if you want to put the accessories somewhere safe, this is as good an option as any. Opening the bag, I can't help but notice that the zip is really good quality and it's got no sticking points, which is quite important because the first thing that seems to go on the vast majority of guitar bags is the zip. And of course the guitar case is padded, so it will offer some level of protection to your guitar. And the bag is quite well made, it's got a strong handle which is quite soft so it won't dig into your hand and it's also got adjustable shoulder straps so you could carry your guitar like a backpack. Let's open it up and take our first look at the guitar. Wow, and I think it looks really nice. Let's take a closer look around the guitar before I tune it up and try it. And I'll take the labels off so they don't get in the way. And whilst I'm doing that, you'll also notice that they're the vintage style machine heads. The fact that the guitar's individually serial numbered makes it feel a little more special than usual guitars in this price range. And as you can see, the guitar's also marked as being part of the Seeker series. And as we mentioned earlier in this video, the Seeker series is designed for more advanced players, or it's got features that a more advanced player would find useful. However, it's still a good guitar for a beginner. Moving down now from the headstock to the neck, and the neck is C-shaped and made of Canadian maple, and it's got black dot inlays for the fret markers. And the neck has a satin finish, which is really smooth to the touch, and it's actually a better finish than some of the more expensive guitars I've reviewed. On the back of the neck, you can see here a skunk stripe, which looks really cool, and makes the neck slightly more rigid. And on the back of the body, the neck plate has been engraved with the logo and when the company was established which looks quite cool. Continuing with the back, you can see that it's made of a really nice wood. And according to their spec, it's poplar. And I've got no reason to doubt this at all. And I'm assuming it's made of several pieces of wood, 
but the joints are done really well and I'm really struggling to see them. The back plate is tortoise shell to match the scratch plate and they've drilled it so it'll be easier when you come to change the strings. And of course the guitar's got a strap button on the end and another one on the upper horn. For someone who's new to guitars, I think one of the things that makes the Strat style so popular over the years is these cutaways, this one in the back and the front, because they make the guitar so comfortable to play. Before I turn the guitar over and we'll look at the front, it's worth me pointing out that I removed the back plate to take a look behind it. And you can see here, this is where you adjust the springs for the tremolo. So if you find it too tight, you can loosen them off. Or if you find them too loose, you tighten them up. Or you can even remove a spring if you prefer. And the reason I took the back plate off is because they never finish behind here. So you can see what the true wood looks like. And here you can see that there's been no cheating and no plywood used. Right, well I'll move round to the front of the guitar now, so I can take a look at that. And the first thing I'll do is screw in the tremolo bar. When you screw in your own tremolo bar, never over tighten it, because the tremolo bar provides quite a lot of leverage, so it's really easy to strip the thread. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the tremolo bar, on this particular type of guitar, you push it down and it causes the pitch to drop. I'll demonstrate later in this video. Right, I'll just do a very basic test first and I'll plug the guitar into the amp. So I'll be testing that the guitar, the lead and the amp work. With the lead, there's no rule as to which side goes to the guitar and which side goes to the amp. However, with this style of socket where it's set back into the body, it's far easier to use the straight side going into the guitar and plug the bent side into the amp. and that all seems to work fine. I'll explain what the controls do on the amp in a minute, but first I'll tune the guitar. So I'll get the tuner out. In the box with the tuner was some instructions and a battery. So I've put the battery in and I've put the tuner on the guitar. And it's really easy to operate because it's only got one button. And basically, you press it one long time to turn the tuner on or off and you use short presses to change the mode. And the C is chromatic, the G is guitar, the B is bass, V for violin and U for ukulele. And I've taken it back to G. I'll speed the actual tuning up because it takes a couple of minutes. With it being a new guitar with new strings on, I have to go around the tuning a couple of times because they'll need to stretch and bed in. Once I got the guitar in tune with the tuner provided, I then check the tuning with a tuner I know is accurate. And the results were very good. Though it's a good idea to experiment with where you clip it on for best results.
Right, before we go any further in testing the actual guitar, let's take a look at what the controls actually do for those of you who've never actually played an electric guitar. And the first thing I need to point out is the pickups. And these are the things that pick up the sound of the guitar, basically. And in the spec, this is described as SSH. And that stands for single coil and humbucker. So this guitar has got two single coil pickups and a humbucker. And the tone the guitar produces will vary depending on which pickup or pickups you select. And in order to select which pickup we want the sound to come from, we use the pickup selector switch, which has five positions. And this is how the five positions work. In position one, the neck pickup is selected. In position two, the neck pickup and the middle pickup is selected. In position three, the middle pickup only is selected. In position four, the middle pickup and the humbucker is selected. And in position five, only the humbucker is selected. Now, the humbucker is actually two pickups in one. It's got two coils. And on this particular guitar, we could turn off one of those coils. And this is called a coil tap. And the coil tap on this guitar is hidden in one of the tone switches. So, by pulling up on the tone switch, you'll turn the humbucker into a single coil pickup because you'll turn off one of the coils. But it's important for me to point out this will only affect the sound when you've got the humbucker selected. So it'll only work when you've got the pickup selector switch in position 5, which is just the humbucker, or position 4, which is the middle pickup and the humbucker. So obviously, if you've got, say, the middle pickup selected, the coil tap will have absolutely no effect on the sound. Another way of changing the sound of the guitar is using the volume and the tone controls. And you'll notice you've got one volume control which affects the whole guitar and every sound that comes out of the guitar. And you'll notice there are two tone controls. And the effect the tone controls have on a guitar can depend on that particular guitar and the wiring. In this particular case, the middle control or the first tone control affects the neck pickup and the middle pickup. And the end tone control, which was also the coil tap, only affects the humbucker. So the final tone control is basically dedicated to the humbucker. Hopefully this will save someone out there from some confusion, as I've had several learner guitarists turn up thinking their guitar's broken because the tone control has no effect on the guitar, when in reality they've just got the wrong pickup selected. Now, because there are so many switching positions on this guitar, I'll just play a couple of chords in each position, just so you get an idea of the effect it has on the sound. And so I'm using a bit more of the kit. I'll place the capo in the second fret, and I'll use one of the picks provided in the kit as well. The picks are in a couple of different gauges, so you can select which one you prefer. The sound on the test will probably be quite rough and ready, but that's because it's just going straight through the amplifier and through the microphone on my camera.
That was all done with the clean sound on the amp, and the volume was about 8. Let's just take a look at what else the amp can do. The amp's got two channels on it, a clean channel and a distorted channel. And if you're on the clean channel, the only control that works is the volume on the end. And this is obviously the clean volume. However, if you put it onto distortion, you've then got three controls. One is the distortion volume, two is the distortion tone, and three is the gain. Here's a look at what they do to the sound. These tests are obviously an approximation of the sound because it's going through the microphone on my camera and then YouTube compression. But it gives you a good idea of what the controls do on the amp. You've already heard the clean sound on this amp, but we have to use the clean volume control to turn the amp on. So now I'll switch over to the distortion channel and you'll notice that no noise will come out if the distortion volume's down and if the gain's down. The amount of distortion you get is really controlled by the gain control. However, if you like it very distorted and the gain very high, you really need to turn the distortion volume down low. When you turn the gain down, the distortion is not so pronounced, so it's the sort of thing you'd find in early rock and roll and possibly electric blues. Whereas when the gain is high, you get a really distorted sound, the sort of thing you'd find in heavy metal. The byproduct of the high gain is greater sustain. So it's the sort of sound you might want to use for lead guitar solos and such like. Even though the distortion volume only affects the distortion, the clean volume affects both. So you might want to balance off the volumes until you get the sounds you want. Right, let's recap what you get with the guitar in the kit and then we'll move on to the conclusion. And after the conclusion, I'll do a final test on the guitar using my equipment and not the provided amp. And I'll explain why I'm doing this in the conclusion. Right, in the kit you get the electric guitar, soft case, a strap, a lead, an amplifier, a tuner, a capo, strings, plectrums, and access to a lessons app. So there's absolutely everything you need to start learning guitar. The accessories in this kit have been really well thought out. So there's nothing you need to buy to get started. So let's move on to the conclusion. The conclusion. This kit is part of a series of guitars and kits that are going to be released this year at NAMM. However, unfortunately, by the time this video has gone live, we will have missed the event. The kits are the standard series, DST100, which are for beginners and students, the Seeker series, DST152, which is what this one is, and it's for advanced players, the Designer Series, or DST200, which isn't a complete kit, but it looks like they've put a lot more effort into making sure the guitar plays really well. A second Seeker Series, but this time the DST400. And again, this one doesn't come with a complete kit, but it seems like a more featured guitar. For example, the Tremolo has got 
two anchor points rather than the old fashioned six anchor points that this guitar's got. And finally, the Junior Series or DSJ100, which comes with a different kit, which has been well thought out so it's lighter for younger students to carry and the guitar is smaller so that your smaller student can easily hold it. If you'd like more information and prices for any of these guitars, I'll put the link to the Donner website down below in the description. And I'll also put the link to the Amazon pages for each of these guitar kits. And I'll also try and get a discount code. So if I get one, the code and or the link will be down below in the description. So it's worth taking a look there. Right, back to the point, and you're probably wondering why I mentioned these other kits in the conclusion. And there is a good point to it. This guitar, the Seeker Series DST152, is described as a guitar for an advanced player. And I want to make sure people don't get confused about this. The price range is the price range for a beginner's guitar. But the quality of the guitar, it will last you until you are an advanced player and the guitar will still be playable to you. I reckon this particular guitar will be around after I'm dead. It's a really good quality guitar and it plays nicely. It's got a nice neck with a more or less perfect relief. So straight out of the box, it had no buzzes there were no rough fret edges and all the frets were seated really nicely so the fingerboard was really pleasant to play on and I didn't find any nasty buzzes or nasty spots on the neck at all. And the action at the 12th fret was approximately 1.5mm which is really good for a guitar that's just come straight out of the box and hasn't been set up. And the overall quality of build is just really good. And whilst they describe it as a guitar kit for an advanced player, it really is a guitar kit for every player. Just because a company calls a guitar for an advanced player doesn't mean it is. They're no harder to play than the guitars for beginners. So if you want to buy one of these and you're an absolute beginner, I would recommend you buying one of these because it'll last well and it is an easy guitar to play. And let's not forget that the kit with the guitar provides you with everything you need to get started. And hopefully they're all set up as well as this one is straight out of the box because if there's something I've found over the years of teaching is that most new guitarists don't know when it's them that's causing a buzz on the guitar or when it's the guitar that's the problem. And in a separate video, I will do a blind test between this guitar and my Fender Strat, which is more or less the same setup. And it'd be interesting to see how many people guess right. And for myself, I'd really like to know how the sound of the two guitars compare, because I've never done that for myself either. Anyway, here's the final test and I'll do it with my own sound equipment, as the amp provided is okay for a practice amp, but that's about all. And I'll do three loop recordings, one of a simple finger picking pattern, the second using power chords, and the third of a screaming lead.
if you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And if you'd like to see some guitar lessons or go through some structured guitar courses, there's several completely free on my YouTube channel in the playlists. Or if you want to see them better laid out, you can go to www.ebooksforguitar.com and you can see several guitar courses there, completely free to view online. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll come back again soon.